Oh, hey there. Dan here, uh, DD Speed Shop. So, we're back on 55 Chevy Nomad. Realistically, this thing's done. It runs pretty good. I think we've done enough testing on it. I'm pretty confident with it. Um, but we're going to make a few long hauler, hot weather, oh, neighbors go crazy today, um, deep south temperature dealing with problems. Now, <clears throat> I've never actually run this radiator. So this radiator, uh, it's, it's a company called Performance World. I've used a lot of their stuff. It's Canadian Chinese stuff, basically. It's pretty heavy duty. And I will say uh, last year we've run in my buddy Josh's 55 Chevy Gasser. We did some drag and drive stuff, Canada, and it, it ran fine. Cooled the motor. There's no issues. I do worry about the stop and go traffic. So I went out and picked up another radiator from Performance World. And this is a universal big block, or whatever you want to call it, kind of deal. So it's the biggest universal one they make. The core, so this, the, the factory Tri-5 radiator is the same height, top to bottom, but a Tri-5 rad has tanks, top and bottom. And then the center core itself, I think is four inches or so wider, plus the tanks. So it's probably, I think I did the math, it was like 30% more uh, capacity and uh, surface area. It's a dual core aluminum deal and it should fit in here. I've put it in a couple of different cars with great results. We ran this exact same part number radiator last year uh, down in Atlanta and in Tennessee in crazy heat, stop and go traffic, and it did just fine. I'll probably run that with dual fans on it and I think I'll probably modify these little side pieces. So we're cruising on the highway, all the air will go through the radiator. So we gotta do that. So this rad setup is gonna come out. The next thing is the battery in the firewall. I've had enough of it. It's very close to the fender wall headers. A few of you had noticed that. And yeah, so I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna unbolt everything and see if I can modify this core support to, to fit that radiator. I got some ideas there and maybe put this battery right up front here. That's where they are on a 57 Chevy. At which point then, I would like to extend some wiring. So we ran into issues with this, uh, the Holly setup. Everything was working great, but the RF, EMI, I don't know, dirty power noise gets in the way and throws stuff away. Throws stuff out of whack. So what I'm thinking is, battery up front, frees up all this firewall, gets the battery away from the heat source. I get to put all my Holly stuff on one side, all the coil ignition on the other side, keep them separated. I did buy some Faraday tape so I can wrap anything I think is, you know, can get interference, go from there. I'm also probably gonna run everything for the Holly off of a relay. On this side, I have a little fuse block, so we'll put relays and a fuse block over here. So anything we use inside that runs past the coil, which will be the trigger wire, it'll just be triggering the relay, and the relay can actually power the coil. So it'll just have power going here to here. Nothing will be in its way other than well, nothing. That'll, that'll be it. The charge wire all out be down there, and the coil and whatnot be over there. So it'll be as separated as we possibly can be, and we should be good. So that's the plan we're going to do, I was going to say today, but it's already late. It's chilly out. Uh, this video, that's the plan. So, start ripping this apart. Okay, so again, tri five radiators, they're very simple, and they're, they're good, but... I am worried about the extreme heat we're going to go through. Um, the other radiators probably have to sink down a little bit. These ones bolt in with some uh, little side strapping. So they're very easy to install as long as you have a decent core support. Ah. And uh, it has a center mount or a center out spigot for the, for the uh, thermostat housing. I did get one that's offset like a standard kind of Chevy deal. I'm hoping that the new radiator, because this has some height, I'm gonna do a quick measurement here, but I'm pretty, well, I think I measured it before. We can have it, the radiator sit over here and have the upper rad hose go over. We have to just cut a little bit out to lower it a little. We'll hopefully it'll set in there, close the hood. May have to, oh yeah, we gotta modify this because it has a little whoop de doo cut out for the, for the rad hose, but it should go pretty good. So we'll get it all stripped down here.
Okay, so I had to cut out just a little bit of the well, the piece that was holding the radiator up. Now let's just see what we got here. This will fit like a dream. I've installed the same radiator, like I said, in a couple of different tri fives with slightly different results. So, the probably run into is the lower hose is at an angle upwards and the petcock gets in the way of the factory kind of deal. So we could offset it, which wouldn't be terrible. Make my life pretty easy. Now we had two inches of clearance. Uh, whoops, that has to go on top there. What does that give us? Well, that's right at two inches. Let's just see if that'll kind of work for us. Let's see if she'll close. Oh. Bend in the hood, bend in the hood. One latch. Oh yeah, so that's fine. Didn't knock the radiator off or nothing. So we got a good height. Now the situation we have to deal with is clamping it down, which I think what I'll do is build a couple of standoffs just kind of hold it. And some sort of a platform that runs across. Whoops, I'll get that later. So the radiator is something to sit on. We'll put some rubber isolators on it. But I think but the easiest thing to do is going to be actually pull the core support out and narrow it up. So it's a big U. So if we keep the center centered, keep the top bar where it is, but these two down bars for support, if we can move them in a couple inches on each side, that'll give me room for the hose to wrap around and the pet cock to drain and everything else will stay the same and we won't need to add any material in. So I'm going to do a couple little measurements then we're just going to pull this right out. All that's on it is the horn so that's nothing to deal with and then uh, we've got some welding ahead of us. So I'll just show you here. Um, we've got the radiator kind of centered. She's a little cockeyed because the lower spout is hitting right there but if we take our tape we go from you know call it six and a half to six and three quarter and then same deal here call it six and a half six and three quarter so it's roughly centered uh the petcock has a little bit of a room to move around so i think what we're gonna do is i marked it we're gonna just move this down bar over three inches so we'll cut it out here take three inches out of the bottom of the flat weld it back together it'll still be square bolt in and be just as strong let's be honest um the only thing that's going to do is affect the fan placement hmm i'll think about that because what i did previously is i had a 14 inch fan on one side and a 10 inch fan on the other and i had a little area for a transmission cooler which obviously a transmission cooler is irrelevant on this so we might have to do a little figure in so I do want to run the fans on this side if possible so we're gonna we're gonna make it a little smaller we could have one puller and one pusher maybe that wouldn't be the end of the world then we could have two 16s if I go wider well I can't go wider because that's the frame rail right there so be, yes it's all coming back to me now the core sport man that 56 Chevy was a nightmare I think we're gonna have to go smaller and Worst case, we'll have one big fan on it. We could put a shroud on or do something, but I think one puller, one pusher should be fine. All right, so I can already hear all you guys have all sorts of better ideas than this, which is fine. And everyone's saying, don't put a pusher fan on, also get it. Everyone's saying, there's a whole kit you can put on the front of this thing, it'll be absolutely mint for the rad new core sport, also true. At this point, this is where my brain is at. And the budget on this project, well, she was blowing a, fuel injection, transmission, and rear end to go. So this is free. I can't even afford two gloves. So we're gonna cut three inches 
of the bottom here. So we'll do that line to right there. We'll cut that out, sandwich them together, and it'll be perfectly French. Wow, so this here setup we're working with, you ain't getting much bigger of a radiator in here as far as I'm concerned. So we got that dialed, now the problem we're running into, as you recall, well that radiator sits down a little bit, so there's a bunch of free space underneath here, and it just barely touches. So what I'm gonna do, I got it tomorrow, get some, you know, a little flat bar with a, maybe an angle, I guess would be best. Run it across, I'm gonna weld it just right to this uh, skirt there. Go across, that sits right on top of the frame rail so it ain't going nowhere. And that'll give it a good place to sit. I can then put rubber isolators underneath and hold it down. Then we gotta figure a way of how we're gonna squeeze it down up top. But that's all a job for tomorrow. Um, there's not much space on either side. So I can modify these little wings down, shorten them up so all the air has to pass right through. We've taken the battery tray off, and I just kind of vice gripped it here. I think this is where she's gonna live, and I think I'm just gonna weld it on. Zip, zap, zow, and it ain't going nowhere. Because if I'm taking this car apart again, shoot me, but uh, we'll need a grinder, but it'll be fine. Uh, but I'll screw around to weld in nuts and stuff like that. It's just not for me right now. And then we can probably rewire some of this, do a little screwing around. I wanna put big, heavy grounds in it. I was talking to Newburn. And he was saying, you know, a lot of this newfangled stuff, LS motors, all that, just grounds everywhere. So what he did, he grounds the cylinder head to the block, the block to the frame, the frame to the battery, big heavy grounds. And I went with like four gauge stuff. So I think tomorrow I'll go and buy, uh, you know, a couple lengths of like zero gauge welding cable or something. Start making my own connections. Just ground this thing really, really, really well. And uh, then look at all the room we have, whether it's here or here. Keep the holly on that side, <clears throat> a couple holes through the firewall, and we should be golden. All the ignition can stay on that side. We'll tape everything, wrap it all, and we should be pretty good. I gotta figure out radiator hoses, um, you know, something that goes over and down. And underneath here, we still have lots of room. If you can see my hand there, but everything will go fine. So we should be pretty good. I think it'll look kind of goofy but good for what it is. I'm fighting out if I should paint that big radiator black or not. I kind of like how it's a big aluminum deal, but whatever. We'll figure that out tomorrow. Actually, got a lot. it went a lot smoother than I thought. I'm very happy with it, so I'm gonna weld that in and then I think I'm done for the night. Tomorrow morning will be up uh, bright and early, get work done, and then do a little shopping the way home. Hopefully it's the last time we're wiring this thing. Because I feel if we are wiring it again, it'll be on the side of the road because we got problems. But I'm, uh, I'm pretty confident at this point. I'm gonna do an oil change on it too. Like the oil change plugs, change the O2. I'm sure the oil is just full of uh, gasoline, so we'll do a good clean oil change on it. And I, I don't want to say it all out, but I think we're done. Okay, so it's actually uh, the next day. Um, did a bunch of kind of screw around today already, mostly just with wiring. I've made all new. Uh, battery cables for this thing so they're just absolutely beefy and giant so the power ground I think there's zero I went with or ones and then uh, I did charge and I put a pile of grounds in this thing with uh, number fours maybe Oops, I forgot what I did so we go I did head to block block to frame on both sides chunk 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 and then over here I went from the frame uh, it's kind of hidden, but to the firewall. I might do one on that side too. I'm just, I'm going like over the top with ground wires. Um, we got that dialed. 
I got this front piece kind of together, the cowl. So I had a piece of channel. I just kind of cut it, made it fit. It's, it's kind of ugly, but it is what it is. I kind of welded everything together. So at this point now, the core support is not going to come out easy <laughs> for any reason. But the way I looked at it was to take the core support out is one, two, three, four, and then two bolts down there. And then a little bit of screwing around getting these side plates off. You have them all uh, bolted in proper versus there's four bolts to hold the fenders on and those two you can take the whole front clip off. So if you have to do a motor or something like that, the clip's coming off this thing, which is what you do anyways on a Tri-5. The only thing we'll have to move would be the brakes gotta get disconnected, a couple of wire looms on each side, whatever we have, fold it in, whole front clip is off, life's good. I got the battery tray, same thing, it's all mounted and good, we should be fine there. This is the, this is actually the size of the battery cable I was using. So it's twice the size of, you know, the grounds and the charge wire. And I mean, geez, this is the, that's a new big lead. So we're good on that. Um, okay, so here's the radiator. So I glued, uh, tried to glue some of these little rubber isolators on. And this is how it's gonna fit. So it should be pretty good. Ugh. Gentle, gentle. So it sits on that channel. I put across with the rubber isolators. We have our little, you know, pans there. So any air coming through the radiator or through the grill is gonna be forced to go through the rad. It looks high, I realize that, but it fits. No issues. Didn't knock it over anything, so that's all golden. Now I did up top, so it's gonna sit on the bottom. I made these little angle pieces with some just kind of hollow rod or bar or whatever. And I'm just gonna run some all thread or a long bolt through on each side and that'll hold it in and down and that's fine. So now we gotta do real quick is go try and see what we can do for radiator hoses. So we're gonna run by the old Napa, they're only in place open right now and uh, do a little measuring. But if I can get upper lower rad hose, well, we're set. I have a offset uh, thermostat housing. So really do that, do that. Cooling system to be done. I want to do an oil change to it. Um, and then we have all this room here now for the Holly stuff. So again, we'll run a fuse block and then I think everything I'm going to do is going to be off of a relay. So it's 100% clean power. Even if we're getting power from inside or what has to run by anything, all that power is going to do is turn the relay on and then the relay could be like right here and then just go around and into the Holly. So eliminate everything. Everything, everything, everything. And then I don't know what I got for electric fans. I think I have, well, I have one on the radiator. I had a smaller one. Hopefully a little look around, do some wiring of that. I think that's kind of it for today. I'd like to get that taken care of. And then we got to clean the inside up. I meant to buy seat belts today on the way home, but I totally forgot. Yeah, it's short list, short list stuff. So we'll measure up for some hoses, take some pictures and see what we can get today and go from there. Wow. I don't know, you guys, this looks... Oh, that thing's pretty good. That's a big radiator. So we got the little, uh, the, the blockers or whatever in. Everything's taken care of there. I went out to Napa. Man, thanks to those Napa guys. So I brought in like a drawing or coat hanger with what I wanted for measurements. And I ended up getting a rat hose. Cut part of it off, but perfect fit. Everything is good. No issues there. We got this thing bolted in. It ain't going anywhere. Rubber isolators on the bottom, cherry. So now I've cleaned up the wiring just a little bit. Again, 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 three times, anyways. So what we're gonna do on this now is I'm going to run this little fuse block. Now, the instructions are very specific. They say the Holly, which is these two wires, direct to battery, I'm gonna do that. Everything else, I think I'm gonna run off of these, this will be switched fuse block. So it's gonna run right to the battery. Um, so it'll be 12 volt constant power. So we run the fans and all that off of it. And then just use relays to trigger the power on and off. Um, yeah, same with, so this was the wire we were running. This is the 12 volt wire, which I ran from inside through a toggle. But I think what I'm gonna do now is avoid everything. So it was inside at the fuse block. It's gonna come just off this little one go in there through a hole over here i'm going to drill as far away as we possibly can and go from there this 
is uh, the controls the fuse block itself. So we'll run that there. Two fans, couple, you know, a couple of relays. Pretty simple stuff. And we'll kind of tuck it all around the back. I got a little grind to I, I weld this on for the battery hold down, which now, of course, we move the battery, so we don't need that anymore. Um, what else we got going on? Oh, I picked this stuff up. So I don't know. This is, it's called Faraday tape. So it's designed, I think, like the opposite way. So if there's like a electromagnetic pulse, it won't zap your stuff if it's wrapped in it. But I'm hoping we can use it for some of this. So I think the only real wire that matters is kind of this one. These two will be on their own. They're going right to the battery on this side. So they'll be away from everything. And what else do we got? This is just the trigger for the fan. So I think that's fine. This is our fuel pump. That was fine. We're gonna separate them and kind of keep them apart just cause. And there may be a wire or two on the distributor I might wrap in some of that Faraday tape. There was like a little white wire that was the points output. I don't know if that makes a difference. And there was a little spiral wire which goes from the Holly to the, well, the Holly throttle body to the Holly distributor. We might wrap that one as well. I can't see it harming anything. And then all the stuff on this side, we're gonna end up undoing and moving further over. I do have a different coil I might try. Apparently these ones really throw off a magnetic kind of deal, which this is good. I got no issues with it other than it you know, whatever. So I have a standard blaster too I've had kicking around. So I think, and I have lots of room. I might literally just move it over here as far away as possible. And, you know, we'll take that one as a spare, obviously. Then we got the plug wires on both sides. We'll have to kind of wrap those together, put them up against the firewall with a couple of P clamps. Everything as far away and neat and organized as possible. I think, I hope we will have no longer any issues Last time we drove it, we didn't have any problems, just by the way I had it routed. So now we're just taking it one step further for absolute, let's do it again. <laughs> this radiator, I gotta say, so Performance World, you know, if you got, if this is a great Canadian tip, if you're Canadian, these are, I think they're 300 bucks, 350 bucks. Uh, I don't know what the part number was, 3,017 or 8,017 or something like that. It's the biggest universal radiator. I welded in a little plate across, especially if you're a Tri-5 guy, plate across couple of these little tabs holds it perfect and that's a that's a big honking rad and i mean i know cold case and all that sells those all in one with a core support and all that but i think they're like well over a thousand bucks so if you got that money spend it i don't this is a big expense actually screwing around with all that especially when we had a known good radiator but uh, i just don't trust it in the absolute heat of the south this i have all the confidence in the world in because it was in that car. We had no issues last year. So, there you are. Uh, we'll get a camera set up. Maybe we'll get kind of some wires cleaned up and we'll start, uh, you know, snipping and doing what we got to do over there. I got I to gotta think about it a little bit. Yeah, the grounds and wiring in this thing now are top notch. So, I've been wiring until my eyes are crossed because I just keep changing my mind of what I want to do and it's a friggin' disaster. So, I'm going to show you what I have done. Then I'm going to go in and we're probably going to get cheeseburgers and this will be a problem for tomorrow. But, um, yeah, cause everything was all hidden behind the battery and all that. Well now everything has to be lengthened and screw around. So we have our relay wire that goes to the fuel pump. So that's all good. This wire here I lengthened and that's to power the whole mess. <clears throat> the, uh, fuse block in the car, sorry. Now I just want to show this. So this is that Faraday tape which is, you know, it's like a peel and stick deal. So I got this off Amazon, it's Amazon there. And I watched a couple of YouTube reviews and a guy had this and like a little bag and stuff all by the same company. And they would like try and call the cell phone and it wouldn't work and stuff. I don't know if it was real or not, but took it out of the bag and it did work. Stuff is junk, doesn't really, <laughs> it doesn't tape very well. So I did this one line. So this, this wire here is the switch 12 volt. So it runs in, runs up here, and it just turns on the relay, which then obviously gives power to the whole Holly deal. So when this loses power, it kills the relay, which then kills the whole mess. That's, that's our main issue, intermittent power to the relay. So I thought it'd be kind of stickier. So it's a nightmare to get, I should have probably started this off camera, idiot. But uh, getting the tape off the back, nightmare. 
So I thought I would just like, oh, gently kind of wrap it around and stuff, but it doesn't, it's not, it's not what I wanted. I thought it would look nice. So instead we're gonna just kind of jam it all together. The, the tin foil looked nicer. Oh man. So I did that tin foil, people didn't get the joke. People were explaining to me in the comments how because I didn't ground the tin foil, it was actually doing nothing. <laughs> it was just to make fun of Uncle Tony. <laughs> so I'm gonna do this to the whole wire. I thought they were, I thought that was part of the joke was that they were saying you need to ground the tin foil. Oh, was it? I thought that that's what that meant. So I didn't get the joke? I think maybe you didn't get the joke. I thought the whole joke was that if you're not grounding the tin foil, it's not oh. gonna work because it's all about your ground. Sorry guys, I didn't get the joke then. So I'm just gonna do this, then I'm gonna wrap in electrical tape and then put some sort of a shielding, like tech flex stuff I got from that uh, wirecare.com. But uh, yeah, I think that's about it for tonight though. I still gotta edit, man, this is a, for how not to do it. Of course I ordered this and Murr sent me a link. He's like, hey, they have the same stuff, but you can just slip it through like a little collar type thing. I'm like, oh, that would've been way better than this, but. WWMD? I should have asked her, what was I thinking? But there you go. So now we're electronically safe. So that's where we leave it. I got to edit a video for tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'll come back out. We'll finish off this wiring real quick. Put the fans on, do an oil change. Let's see if we can maybe put a couple miles on it. Tomorrow's a busy day though, so it might be the day after. But I will be back. And it's only like 15 seconds for you guys, but days and days for me. See you tomorrow. And days and, and days. days and days and days. Turn the camera off. <laughs> well, guys, cars on the table. It's been at least two or three days since I was last filming. I have had all sorts of stuff going on. Uh, fence repair, had construction guys here. Some tried to steal a tow truck. So column was smashed, wouldn't go into gear, wouldn't start, dealing with insurance, getting that towed away. Well, working with the construction guys stuff in here, it's just, it's been a lot. But I have got a lot done in that amount of time. I know we're getting a little long in the tooth on this thing, and I'm kind of explaining as it goes, but you know what, this is hot rodding. And uh, I kind of feel like this is the last full blown wrenching video. There are still some things I want to do to this thing, but uh, that'll come up for the next few weeks. From where we are now, it's like two weeks before we're leaving for power tour, and this video probably comes out. And, uh, cars together, but I want to jam miles on it. So here is what I've been kind of doing. We have all the wiring kind of dialed together. Now I will say, I don't know if I said this in the last clip, so it's been a few days. This wiring is definitely not <clears throat> very neat and pretty, but what it is, is very simple and each wire or each loom has its own set. So um, like this one, for instance, is your fuel pump. So if I have a fuel pump issue, I can trace it back. I know where it, <clears throat> where it is. This one right here, that's to our O2, so we know what's going on there. This one here is the main power to the fuse block. So you can kind of decide what's happening there. I did put some of this goofy foil tape on, but you know what? This will, you know, it's overkill, overkill, overkill. I think we're far enough away. I mean, we've got four or five inches, but this, in theory, should be able to sit right on the header and not burn through whatever it's looming, whether it's, uh, you know, wiring or heater hoses or whatever. We did the uh, purple start solenoid wire as well. So that's all taken care of. We have all our relays. So I got two fans, one, each fan is on its own relay, just in case there's ever an issue. We have redundant fans. This relay here, this is the most important one. Wow, in my mind. So we have clean power coming through the firewall, ran through here into this relay. This relay then goes back and this is where the Holly is getting its power from under the dash, in, right from battery, relay, bam. We have these old giant, you know, power and ground cables. The, the thing is just grounded and all that to, to, you know, end of the day. Fans didn't go exactly as I wanted, but I think we'll still be okay. So I put a large sucker on the back and then offset in the front, I think this is a 10 and I'm using it as a pusher. So you gotta take it apart, flip the fan around, and it does go pretty good. I've had this thing idling, and it has 180 stat in it. It was like 179, just chugging away, chugging away. We haven't had super hot weather, but I'm pretty confident. I ran the valves today. This motor does have a kind of a clickety clickety sewing machine noise. It does have aluminum roller rockers. Now the internet splits. Some people say they make noise. Other people say they don't. It has lots of oil pressure. 
Uh, again, the, this motor I was told is a good motor. I trust the guy who got it from. And a lot of people know this motor and say it's good. So all there really is to do is maybe it just is a little noisy and that's just how it's gonna be. Now it's obviously only when you're right under the hood looking at it. There's a few things I do wanna go over and check. I've done some stuff, so we have to do that first. The, uh, the water pump pulley is unbelievably close to the water pump. I actually had to shave part of it down, as I recall, by looking at it. So maybe the water pump is, or the pulley is just a little out of, woo, -woo and it's kind of tick, 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 just hitting it. So I think we're gonna, those will all be tests we're gonna do. And that's, there will be some videos driving this thing, um, you know, doing some, some longer road trips and figuring it out, but there you go. Oh, and, and, She's got a license plate on her, so it's inspected, ready to go. I towed her down there and uh, everything was good. A couple of things had to change, nothing serious, obviously. When everything is brand new, what could the problem be? But uh, we have that dialed, so I think I'm gonna clean up in here. And honestly, it's time for a couple new projects to start working on. This one will be in the background. I'll go from there. I'm gonna clean up, and I do have one more thing to say. But I really do appreciate you guys hanging along for the ride here. And ultimately, Make sure you leave a comment. If you want to go for the test rides and all those things, let me know. I'll always have the camera on my phone, so if it goes sideways, we got to film that. But uh, really, the internet's not fun if someone's winning, right? So you only want to see the losses. Uh, so garage is basically cleaned up. We're just doing a couple of final things on this hot rod. The final bolt for the first, the last time, hopefully. Um, anyway, so this, this hot rod has kind of come to an end. And this thing started off as an absolute heap. I'm sure you've hear me, heard me say it many times, but an absolute disaster of a car. <laughs> and it wasn't that long ago. And, uh, you know, we kind of had it built once and had a redesign and changed our mind on what we're going to do with it. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, I guess what I'm trying to get at is I really want to thank all of you guys for watching. I know there's been a, some disaster videos and people, why is he doing it this way? And why did he build it that way? And it should have been nicer maybe, or whatever it may be. But I think at the end, everyone kind of gets the fact that this car was well and truly crusher bait at one point. And now it's back on the road. And uh, you may not agree with the way it's built, but you can't disagree with the fact that it has a license plate on it again, and it can be enjoyed. And now, if somebody did want to take this car to the next level, it is very buildable from where it was. So again, I know there was a lot of ads to watch. I know all those things are terrible, but I promise I spent every YouTube dollar <laughs> that I got on this hot rod. 75% of the dollars went into this thing because just everything was expensive on it. But... I did get help along the way. Um, just gotta double check everything here. You know, when I was when we decided to take this thing on power tour, I thought, you know what? Maybe it's time to spend a few dollars on a car. Now I've I've had a lot of cars. You guys have seen a lot of cars come and go on the channel. Well, a lot of cars have come and then end up in the field. But uh, everything's been pretty cheap, pretty budget-minded. Kind of stuff I've kicked around or I got from a deal on marketplace or whatever it may be. This is the first car on the channel and in my entire life that I actually spent real money on. When I did that, I did reach out to, I mean, the, the big people to help, Holly was huge, American Powertrain, and uh, put performance for the rear end there. Those were guys I reached out, sent an email, listen, that, don't worry, they still got my money. But they got it, they wanted to kind of help me out, do what they could. Uh, you know, give me the old good guy deal. And I couldn't have done that again without you guys watching. And realistically, we're gonna put it through its paces and, and hopefully it all works out. And this is the first car I've ever had that I think really deserves all this stuff. We've done a lot of those, you know, four door to two door conversions or real budget budget cars. And it's, it's a little funny to put real fancy stuff in a real budget car in my mind, personally. That's the way I look at it. This car, I think, it's rough around the edges, but it's all new metal. It's all new floors. The suspension's good. I mean, everything on it is nice. Really, it needs a good body man and a few uh, pails of Bondo and be ready for legitimate uh, paint job. And, and you wouldn't be embarrassed to drive this thing. So that's that. Now, one other guy who I want to equally thank 
and and maybe send a little hate mail to Bill Hill. So he he watches the videos. He's another sucker like the rest he is with low low standards. And uh, he you know I was working on tri fives and stuff. He sends me an email one day or maybe it was a Facebook message or maybe it was actually in a live stream. I forget what it was. Anyways, he sent me a message and just said, "Do you want a nomad?" So of course I said. Yes, what are you going to say? We were in Hawaii. Is that what it was? <laughs> yeah. I don't remember what it was. <clears throat> so we're on vacation, I guess. And old, you get my good side? And old Bill Hill says, do you want a nomad? So what would any man say is, obviously I want a nomad. And I, I think I said, okay. And I said, how much? He said like three grand, 3,500 bucks. And I said, sounds great. And uh, mentally in your head, you're thinking, what the heck kind of nomad are you getting for $3,000? And uh, I found out, as it turns out. So <laughs> we got we got a nomad, <laughs> but it's cool. I mean, I think there was only eight thousand of these things built, or something like that. Uh, and who knows how many are still on the road? So we have one of them, and I'm super proud of that. I do appreciate that guy, even though he caused me stress and probably the most amount of money on my Visa card I have ever spent. Bill Hill, um, you know. My buddy Josh, he went and helped. He got this thing, trailered it for me, stored it for a bit. Like a lot of people helped out there. Now, uh, lessons learned on this hot rod. So this was a very far apart car, which was one thing, and I think I could have handled that no problem. The car was nothing. If you go back in the videos when I first got it, the only part we kept of this car was the firewall down the tow boards, the roof, the B pillar, it had a lift gate, it had a tailgate, and, I, and the passenger door, or the driver door, one or the other. I had to build one door, it got full quarters, it has a completely different chassis on it from another car. The entire floor, front, oh yeah, the fuel door stayed. Man, people hate that I left the fuel door paint on it. Um, the, the entire floor front, the cargo floor and everything, we had to sacrifice a 56 uh, Chevy sedan delivery, which I still get hate mail on. Nobody likes sedan delivery. <laughs> sedan delivery, I was 56, no loss. So we had to, buy, we bought that car, I used the chassis, I used the floor, like all sorts of stuff off of it. Every piece of glass uh, I had to put in, actually, you know, uh, Auto City Classics helped me out there too. Love those guys, Mike there. Um, Every single piece of this car, every, I cannot stress it up, every single piece. And all the little trim and stuff, my buddy BW got some in the States, had to mail it to me, and I mean, it was stuff like, you know, like this piece of trim is like 150 bucks or something like that, US, and, and it's beat. So, a car being a part is one thing, but a car being a part that's a rarity, and it's only a few years worth of stuff, that is where it's like a double whammy. And I learned my lesson with that one. So if you're gonna get a car that's super far apart, make sure it's complete or if you're going to get a car super far apart make sure it's very common or doesn't have a lot of weird unique stuff to it because uh i i absolutely lost steam on this car and gave up on it um i think it sat all last winter i was just done with it because i just i was working and working and working to get to the point where like oh i need this widget and it was a fortune and it's used they don't repop it and it's expensive and it's hard to get and you're just like it takes the fun right out of it so there you go. She's basically done. We're going to be doing all sorts of kind of slow, slow cruising, break in miles, figuring out what we're going to do. And, uh, you know, me and Dan are going to, we're going to get hot dogs, go to the half moon, go on some, uh, some short excursions and kind of, uh, keep going like that. Now this thing, again, we spent all that money on it. And I want to say again, you guys, not only did you watch, but you were supportive. And I was very concerned that I was going to go into debt on my visa card, put all these fancy parts in this thing, and then people are gonna call me a sellout. And I was gonna lose, you know, the, the community we kinda had built and all that, which we worked so hard to have and try and be relatable. And I really try and to be relatable. I know we're, there's a few things, two garages and maybe like the little body shop lift that isn't exactly as relatable, but it makes such a difference for me. And honestly, I think it makes a better video for you guys, the, the low standards committee who watches. Um, so anyways, you know, people were so supportive of me spending all this money and I was really concerned about that versus just putting a junk 350 and a turbo 350 in which we literally have stacked up like cordwood because they're so cheap. 
So that being said, uh, after building junk and we'll call it nice cars, I think we're going back to junk. <laughs> I miss it. I miss just working with stuff I have, stuff that's on Facebook. You're kind of building a car based on what pops up used on the internet. There's no real plan, there's no goal, there's no budget. It's like, ooh, that's a nice set of wheels and you go out and buy it for 300 bucks. Or, oh, that's a cool carburetor, I'll go buy that. So I think we're gonna get back to that. For sure on uh, Danny's uh, Chevy 2, that's gonna be budget done. She's got too many cars. We have to have a discussion about that actually. The, the parking situation over here is being a problem. So there's that, and you know, and, and, and one last thing, doing something different. I mean, how many times can you put a small block Chevy with an automatic and a, you know, chop four door into a two door of a tri five Chevy before you kind of start losing your sanity? And uh, this was fun, it was something different to do. I'm glad I did do it, and I'm excited to get on to the next thing. So, thanks for hanging along for the ride. Like I said, there'll probably be a few more videos uh, along the way. We really want to do um, some cool videos on the way down there. Oh, I have an idea. They sell SUV camping stuff. So, like, you remember like the old Aztecs? You put the tailgate down, you put the lift gate up, and you strap on like a tent, and it sticks out. Now, me and Danny are not campers, hate camping, uh, have no interest in it whatsoever, but uh, the idea of just sleeping in your car on the road trip down just seems like kind of a fun time. So not breaking up would be fun. You gotta pressure test the relationship every now and again. So we're gonna buy some Amazon stuff, maybe a Coleman stove. We'll have some pork and beans on the way. I'm just gonna have a good time. I'm excited to finally, uh, what's it called? Enjoy the fruits of my labor. Cause there was a lot of labor in this thing. I don't know how many hours. Oh, and thanks to Danielle for bringing out the cold Cokes and the you know, grilled cheese sandwiches and uh, supporting me, even though there's some mean people on the internet every now and again, and I am a sensitive guy. And she gets after him. <laughs> she gets after him. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, leave me a comment below. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Tell a friend or two. Because uh, Visa, every 30 days, they keep asking for these damn bills. So I got to, you know, eventually you got to pay them off. I don't know what we're working on next. 56 wagon? Maybe just do the ending bit again. Cameraman Danielle was not noticing that the battery was literally flashing dead. So the battery died on where we got cut off there. So well, it's we'll so rare that you say such nice things about me. Imagine if that didn't get recorded. <laughs> oh, damn it. I'm not saying again. <laughs> we'll splice her in here. So again, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends. And uh, let me know what you want to work on next. Because we have Tri-5s, Tri-5s, Tri-5s. Oh, we got a bunch of Camaros. Model A. We got that 47 Chevy. I don't know what we're going to do. Next two weeks are going to be a jam to get this thing road ready. Hopefully it just gets a bunch of trouble free miles and we'll do an oil change and a nut and bolt check and head her on south. Uh, worst case scenario, we're pulling the motor out and changing it. I mean, but somewhere in between there is where we're going to end up and we'll see you down in Atlanta shortly. Just, you, let, just you, let the battery die. Are you going to fit back here to even sleep in here? You're a tall guy. <laughs>